what's going on everyone welcome back to our san francisco giants franchise mode we are here in year number two star of the season about to take on the arizona diamondbacks zach gallon versus logan webb here in our home opener and season opener for year number two our team is looking mighty fine the lineups we're running with against right-handed pitching we'll focus on this because uh, we're going up against Zach Gallen. we have Jung Ho Lee in center field batting a lead off followed up by Ty uh, Tyro Estrada playing second place batting two Juan Soto's batting three in playing right field the big boy the big free agent signing last year we signed the two-time Cy Young winner in Blake Snell and a one-time Cy Young winner in Robbie Ray bolstering our starting rotation and now here in year number two oh yeah and then we got the power bat Jorge Soler and Jung Ho Lee last year to help our hitting this year we get ourselves a young franchise making or franchise player in Juan Soto signing a 15-year 400 million dollar deal we got him with a player option as well as front loading his contract but he will be a san francisco giant for life now playing against his original team in the san diego padres so he'll be playing familiar faces just with a different jersey on i'm so happy we got him but juan soto will be playing right field batting three the new Barry Bonds player for our team, Jorge Soler, our all-star, will be batting fourth at DH. Wilmer Flores will be batting fifth at first base, another all-star from last year. Batting sixth will be Blake Sable, I'm sure, throughout the year. Um, against righties, you'll be seeing me interchanging Blake Sable with Patrick Bailey, as I do want Patrick Bailey to de uh, develop into that everyday catcher personally I think he already is that defensive category of his in particular is what's sticking out to me he just doesn't hit quite as good against righties as Blake Sable does so we're having Bailey against lefties while Blake Sable's playing against righties uh, we have Matt Chapman batting seventh playing third base we have our all star uh, not really our all-star but almost rookie of the year our favorite to win rookie of the year in Marco Luciano he hit 19 home runs in his rookie campaign for us it'll be very interesting to see what he does here in year number two and we have our first year call up this will be his first time playing from start, being on a team since the start of the season in Jason Dominguez. Acquired him from the Yankees last year, trading them our catcher. Um, and I'm very interested to see what this dude can develop into and what he can be. Last year on our team, we batted 203 with the Yankees batted 258. All right, I'm hoping that Dominguez can kind of make take that next step in becoming a true all-star. He does have B potential, so we should be seeing him kind of drive or uh, be very successful and develop properly as the years go on. He's already got the great fielding. He's got the speed. We just need to increase his vision a little bit. He increases his vision and discipline a little bit, and you'll probably see his contact and power go up as the time go. Uh, as time goes on um, but that's going to be against our righties and this batting lineup I think is already enough to help us beat the Arizona Diamondbacks here year number one but against lefties we're going to go Lee Flores Soto Soler the only thing is it really changed again Patrick Bailey's now at catcher but uh, kind of the order of everybody down here is going to go Chapman Patrick Bailey, uh, Estrada, Luciano, and Dominguez. So the only thing really changing between our lineup is our second banner and then five through seven. Everybody else is staying the exact same for the time being. You guys do know I like to interchange our lineup or change our lineups about once a month, depending on how people are batting um, based on their batting average, home runs, and whatnot. Looking at our pitching staff day number one, we're going to have this as 
our starting rotation. It's going to be Logan Webb as our ace, Blake Snell at number two. We did sign Blake Snell to a six-year contract extension. Um, we're basically paying him half of what we are right now. We'll be getting a very serviceable MLB caliber pitcher, and I'm sure down the line, probably between that 2028, 2020, uh, 2029 year, we might even move on from Blake Snell because of how many starting pitcher prospects we have in our system. System. But for the time being, the two-time Cy Young winner, winner has re-signed here in San Francisco. Another former San Diego Padre who will be here for the possibly the rest of his career. Robbie Ray will be batting, uh, won't be batting, will be third in our rotation, followed by Taj Bradley. Now, Taj Bradley had a phenomenal spring training with us. He posted a sub 2.2 ERA. He was above a strikeout in inning guy, and he didn't allow a lot of runs either. I was really impressed with how he was performing here in, um, in spring training, he still has that A potential, so he could develop into a 90s overall pitcher. The only thing that kind of worries me about him, I'm not worried about the home runs over 9 because I don't see San Francisco as like a home run park. But the thing that concerns me about him is he's a three-pitch pitcher. And MLB caliber players, they're, they're going to pick up on three different pitches. But he throws a four seam at 95 miles per hour on average, a curveball at 76 miles per hour on average, and then a changeup at 83 miles per hour on average. Um, I'm not saying this guy can't be a starting pitcher. We just need those three pitches to be some of the nastiest pitches in all of the MLB. Personally, you might see me as the years go on convert Taj Bradley into a closer. Um, probably not going to really see that, but there is a potential that we move Taj Bradley into the bullpen because he's only a three-pitch mix, rep, uh, because of his three-pitch mix repertoire, or because of his repertoire. Um, Camilo Duval does have the closing role for the foreseeable future, um, but if, you know, his contract's coming up to an end, we might have to make that uh, switch between Duvall and Taj Bradley, try to decide between the two who we want truly as our closer. I'd rather Duvall, but Bradley's still, you know, two years younger than him. Sorry, three years younger than him. And he does have a uh, better rating potential, I think. Never mind, they're both A. I thought Duvall for some reason was a B, but no, he's an A. Duvall's pretty fucking filthy. Um, but anyways, we'll get into our bullpen, and then finishing out our rotation will be Kyle Harrison. Um, going into the long reliever, we put Jordan Hicks there. Um, Hicks just didn't have a spot in our rotation. I am looking to move on from the Cy Young runner in Robbie Ray, but he hasn't had a chance to really be a a full San Francisco giant quite yet. Now, he signed a three-year deal um, before we took over as this team for $23 million over three years. His first year, he spent most of it on the IL, quote-unquote. Really, he was playing down in the minors with us uh, for our team. Spent most of that year down there, and then he finished off the season rather well. Not really the greatest what I would want from a Cy Young winner, but he played pretty good with us um, for the last couple of months. Um, it took a while for him to kind of get there. Alex Cobb had a much better season, but Robbie Ray, he was very frustrating. I'm hoping he can get better here in year number two. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see. This is kind of his do or die time. If we get to the trade deadline, and he's not performing. Um, we're probably going to move either Ray into the long relieve role, or we're going to try to trade him. But for the time being, we're going to have Jordan Hicks basically as our sixth man in our, uh, you can think of this as a six man rotation. And we have Jordan Hicks as our sixth man. Now the man out was Matthew Liberator. Um, I really wanted him to have a spot on our team. His velocity is amazing. His break is amazing. He is MLP ready at 25 years of age. This is a guy who needs to be playing against MLB caliber pitchers, but he needs a little bit of fine tuning still. And because our rotation is so strong there's not a, a, a spot for him quite yet now he needs to work on his clutch and he needs to work on his hits and K's over nine those are the three things we're having him focus on we're primarily training wise we have him working with our pitching coach so he's primarily working on the hits 
threw home runs over nine, everything over nine. He's not working on that uh, clutch quite yet, um, but I, I really don't care about that clutch. The clutch will come. All right, I really wanted him to focus on those hits and Ks over nine. And then down the line, I'm hoping he can develop another another step or two, get those hits over nine into the 50s, Ks over nine into the 60s, and he will be just an outright dominant MLB pitcher. But uh, anyways, going back into our MLB rotation, going into the middle relievers, Luke Jackson found himself back with the team. He had a pretty good season last year. Actually, he didn't have a really good season. I thought he he did pretty good, but spring training he did really well. Um, but last year, posting a 5.8 ERA, above a strikeout inning guy, not doesn't walk a lot, but he allows a lot of hits. Last year's number one player on our board that we drafted in Ken Romano signed into a 69 million dollar deal. He's now here in the MLB with his four pitch mix. This dude is very interesting to me, and it's just because of how his stats are lining up. Now, spring training-wise, he threw about 12 innings, struck out 19 batters, and had a .75 ERA. Now, why is that interesting to me? Because you look at that velocity and break. His velocity is 35. You look at his pitches, doesn't throw anything over 86 miles per hour, and then his break is only 43. So usually a guy who doesn't have phenomenal velocity has great break on his pitches, and that's why he's able to still make it work, because the pitches are just so nasty. But neither his velocity or break are even average. They're both below average. What is it about this dude that makes him able to strike pitchers out? And maybe it's because they're so used to fast pitches that they're just not prepared for him out there. He kind of reminds me of last year's Tyler Rogers. Now, if we had Tyler Rogers in here, I think he'd be able to give him a little bit more tips and be able to help him kind of develop a little bit further as he doesn't have that velocity. So I'm hoping he can develop the velocity. We have him focusing on it. Um, but he kind of reminds me of Tyler Rogers. So maybe even Taylor Rogers can help can kind of work with him because Tyler Rogers, the only difference between Roma, Romero and uh, Rogers was Rogers was a submarine pitcher. So he wasn't throwing hard, but he was coming from a really weird angle that people just, it, it was fucking with them trying to see how the pitches were coming at him. Ken Romero, it'll be very interesting to see how he kind of develops as a pitcher, especially since he's coming straight from uh, college up into the MLB and getting no AAA time. Now, if there was a better relief pitcher available in free agency, he, Ken Romero would be spending the first couple of months down in the minors, and I would be seeing him developing him down there. But it, it just wasn't really working. There was I'm not really working, but there wasn't really any um, relief pitchers available. The only one that really stood out to me, and he might even be a free agent right now, he is, was Araldis Chapman. The reason he was, he's got three quirks, homebody, day player, and outlier. He's an absolute stud, former closer um, for the New York Yankees and Cincinnati Reds. Dude throws absolute heat and is absolutely amazing. But at 37 years of age, like even at the start of the season, he's dropped one overall. He went from a 70 overall pitcher down to a 69. And last year during the sim in Pittsburgh, 7.6. 6-4 ERA. That's not something we want to see. Now, his strikeout rate's still elite. 33 innings pitch, 51 strikeouts. There's no doubt about that. But he's like Jordan Hicks. He walks a person in inning. And you, we can't afford that, man. We can't allow people to be getting on base for free. All right? We already got Jordan Hicks, who walks a person in inning. We can't have Chapman walking a person in inning as well. It just won't end well. We'll lose plenty of games. Other, If it wasn't for that one stat, Chapman would be on this team. Romero would be down in the minors developing for the first couple of months. We got Phil Bickford back last year. He was doing pretty good, and he finished the season strong. 10 holds, 3 blown saves to a uh, to a normal save, 44 innings pitch, 36 strikeouts with 10 walks, posting a sub 2 point or posting a 2.05 ERA which is a career best for him. We signed him as a free agent 
And he kind of started settling in and turned into one of our best middle relievers here. Like I said, last year, he got hurt for a couple months and our team kind of started struggling as the injury bug started hitting us. But he's going to be in the uh, going to be a, having a more permanent role or uh, what would be the word? Um a more important role, I guess, in that middle relief, especially since he's going to be one of those veterans along with Luke Jackson in that bullpen to try to teach uh, Ken Romero. Um, and then finally, we have Genesis Cabrera. Now, Cabrera's dropped from a B potential down to a C. He didn't have the greatest season last year. We traded for him from the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, 10 saves, 51 innings, 48 strikeouts with a 4.38 ERA compared to what people are used to seeing with him he, it wasn't awful but it also wasn't a a great success as we were anticipating like i said he had that b potential we were hoping for him to take that next step and he just never did now he did recently sign a pretty long-term extension here in san francisco um and it was front loaded so we do have salary on our side uh, but Cabrera might be one of those players that we're looking to move on from. We just need to get a few more or develop a few more um, relief pitching prospects. Maybe even next offseason we spend some money on a, a, a top quality reliever and we move on from Genesis Cabrera. Now heading into our, our set uh, setup guys, we have Tyler Matzik who the Braves traded to us last season. He had a pretty much a uh, pretty much a career year there, pitching a high 63.2 innings with 70 strikeouts, posting a 3.53 ERA, um, four wins, four losses. Dude was doing really good uh, over with the Braves. We got him for really cheap off a really stupid deal that I really don't understand why they sent him here. Um, but he's going to be here. He's playing for a contract right now. And the fact that he came off a really good year last year, I'm hoping he can take that next step forward. He got that B potential. Yes, he's 34 years of age, but that doesn't mean that he can't. Uh, acquire more attributes and get up into that low 80s, 81, 82 overall for us. Tyler Matzik, I think, will be a real key contribu uh, contributor for us if we're going to make the playoffs. Taylor Rogers also going to be a setup man. Both of our setup guys, 34 years of age, two proven veterans. Taylor Rogers now will out his twin brother in Tyler Rogers. Um, just had to let him go. The the bullpen just didn't have some room for him. Uh, but Taylor Rogers last season, 27 holds on this team. That's le uh, team leading for us. 40 only pitched 42 innings. Nothing compared to the previous two seasons and 48 strikeouts with a 2.76 ERA. That's something going back to his Minnesota days back in 2019, 28, 2018, 2019. Um, I'm really hoping Tyler Rogers can kind of you know he's kind of already. Going down one, as same with Tyler Matzik. A few of our relievers are actually going down one, um, but I'm hoping that he can he can beat Father Time and continue to be a very serviceable player for him. Even if they do digress a little bit, Jackson, Bigford, and Cabrera are probably not going to beat them overall wise. Um, so Ken Romero, depending on how he develops throughout this season, we might see Romero kind of step up into that setup role. You're probably not going to see Romero win Rookie of the Year, um, considering he is going to be in that middle relief uh, position. Um, but he he's probably going to be one of the most interesting prospects to be watching in this upcoming season. And then obviously we're going to have our uh, favorite closer, Camilo Duval. Throws he phenomenal break. He is the best reliever in the league, probably by far. I would say he's the he he's the best reliever in the league right now, um, and he's even developing to become an even better reliever in this league. Fresh off of a contract extension, going to be here for the next six years at six point nine million dollars with a team option at the end of his contract. Um, this dude is phenomenal. He will be helping this team. He's not going to be blowing a lot of uh, save opportunities with us either. I'm very interested to see what he does. Um, but anyways, boys, let's jump on into our seat. 
Alrighty, here we are, season opener, year number two, God bless America, National Anthem being sung. That's right, sending the fucking Jets. But anyways, boys, here in the season opener, home opener as well crowd is not packing in here it might be because of the weather it is a little cloudy on and off rain happening right now you might see a little bit of a delay okay as time's gone on i'm seeing some people come to the stands seeing more people in the stands i'm liking it first cut oh no still pretty empty here for opening day of san francisco and i don't know why you're going to get to see the new face of the franchise, Juan Soto. He's projected to lead pretty much the team in everything right now. Batting average, OPS, home. Oh, no. Jorge Soler is projected to lead in home runs. Juan Soto for RBIs. I didn't get to see the last two there. But, yeah, he, he's the face of the fucking franchise now in Juan Soto. People are very anticipated to see what he's going to be doing here in game number one. Logan Webb coming off a torn rotator cuff last season. Before it happened, he had a 9-5 record, pitched 116 innings, 2.87 ERA, 1.1 whip, with a 17.6 strikeout rate, 4.7 walk rate, 83 strikeouts in those 116 innings. I think he was one of the reasons why we kind of took a step back in that second half of the season, losing our ace, Logan Webb. Big loss for our team. Big loss there. 92 overall pitcher. You're going to lose him, especially a dude who's got great command and some filthy shit like him. Your team's probably not going to win as many games. He's someone who, when you see him set up against a team, you expect to get a win that day. Well, anyways, 2-2 count now to Cattell Marte. Hit off into left field. Juan Soto trying to get under it, and he does for out number one. Oh, no, not Juan Soto. My bad. Jason Dominguez, the young lad, getting under it for play number one. Last year spent pretty much all of last year, except for September, down in the minor leagues. Um, September got called up, and we got to see a little bit of him for a month. Didn't have the greatest batting average, but... As time went on, he started to figure out uh, MLB pitching a little bit more. Now, 1-1 one, one count has fouled off into the left, or uh, foul left field. Geraldo Perdomo up to bat for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And he's a swinging and missing on that circle change. Strikeout number one of the season for Logan Webb. 1-1 one, one count to Corbin Carroll now for the Diamondbacks. Hit on to the first baseman. Wilmer Flores grabs it for out number three. Easy ground out there. 1-2-3 inning for Logan Webb. Now up is the Diamondbacks where Lee will be leading off for us. Followed by Estrada and then Juan Soto. Zach Gallen on the mound for the Diamondbacks here today. He had 11 and 14 record. Actually, I'm, it's very interesting to see that 11 and 14 with Zach Gallen. 3.87 ERA, 189 strikeouts in that 209 innings. Wow, Gallen did not have a good year last year. It'll be really interesting to see if the, maybe the Diamondbacks try to shop him for somebody better or expect him to take that next step. But anyways, Jung Ho Lee up. He's in a 1-2 count following that swing and miss. He's got a very interesting stance here. Very open. But 1-2 count. No, that's it. Takes the knuckle curve for ball 2-2-2 two, two, two now to Jung Ho Lee. Downs pitch. Hit on. Followed off to the left. Left fielder trying to get it, but it goes out of play. So Lee staying alive here. 2-2. Two, two. And looking at the fastball, just barely hitting that top left corner of the strike zone. And that will be Zach Gallon's first strikeout of the season. 
Umcam showing it there. He saw it as a strike. Lee, you got to swing at anything close when you got a two-pitch, uh, two-strike count. Tyro Estrada getting under a ball, popped into right field. Corbin Carroll under it. That's out number two. So Estrada in that 1-1 count. Second casualty of the day. Juan Soto now coming up for San Francisco. Back in the division where it all began, his or where his career began in the MLB. He's going to be looking to go deep here. He's in a 1-1 count. Ooh, I don't know about this. This ump, man. Yeah, Soto's not happy about that call. No one in this building is happy about that call. He's got a wide strike zone, this ump. So 1-2. Swung on and miss on the circle change. And that's Gallon's second strike out of the day. I think this ump, though, he's calling these close pitches strikes. I think he just doesn't want to be standing out here in the rain. I think he wants this pitch or this game to kind of speed along. But through one, no hits, no runs. Leading off for Arizona, the left fielder, Lourdes Guriel. Here in the sec uh, top of the second, we got Lourdes Guriel. 1-1 one, one count last year, batting 279. Still looking for our first hit here today. Will Arizona get it? Swung on, hit towards Luciano. That's going to go into the outfield. Minguez hit it, uh, grabbing it, throwing it in. And I guess it was Lourdes Gurriel, first hit of the season for uh, Arizona. Just a hard hit ball got outside the reach of Marco Luciano. Now, Luciano doesn't have the greatest fielding stats. He'd probably be better as a second baseman, um, but he's a better shortstop than uh, Tyro Estrada or anyone else we have. We are working on his fielding to try to make him a better shortstop, and the fact that he's so young, I think we could do it. It's just going to take a little bit of time for him to develop into it. Christian Walker going down swinging. Nasty break there. I think that was the slider that Logan Webb uh, threw. Strike. Sit down, Walker. Elias Diaz up. Man on first. One out. 1-1 one, one to him. He pops it up into right field. Soto trying to get under it, and he's not going to have the speed that's going to bloop in for a hit. A bloop single into right field. Soto not even running after. I think he thought it was going to go foul, and it stayed fair. So 2-2 two -two now to Alec Thomas. Man on first and second. He's got a chance to get the first run here of the game. Logan Webb trying to get him to hit into a double play. And swing on and miss on that circle change. That's strike out number three for Logan Webb. All right, we'll take it. So that's two outs with a man on first and second. It's a good pitch right there, Webb. So Webb's trying to get out of this inning keeping San Francisco ahead. Game uh, inning should already be over. So 1-1 one, one to Suarez. Just a blooper hit to the pitcher, Webb. He'll throw it on to first. That's out number three. So Webb does get out of that jam or in, out of that pickle. Soler, Flores, and Blake Sable are up next here in the bottom of the second. So Jorge Soler, last year hit 42 home runs, second best of his career with batting 283. He was one of the best and most consistent hitters here in San Francisco. Trying to top that in his sophomore year here in San Fran. Swung on hit, gets behind the second, or behind the third baseman's glove. He gets the first hit for San Francisco. Lead off single here, bottom of the second. I told you, he is one of the best hitters here in San Francisco, one of the most clutch hitters here in San Fran, too. His, his prime might be right now. And with the addition of Juan Soto, those two are going to be hitting possibly 100 home runs 
combined by the end of this season. We might have uh, two 50 home run hitters. But anyways, batting next will be Wilmer Flores. He's in a 1-2 count. Pitch to him, swung on, gets behind the first baseman. That's going to be a single man on first and second to start this third inning. Flores and uh, so, uh, Wilmer Flores and Jorge Soler were both also two all-star selections last season. Now, we didn't get to see uh, Jorge Soler bat at all at the all-star game, but we did get to see uh, Wilmer Flores get a single in the all-star game. Blake Sable up now, following it off to the left in a 1-2 count. Sable just, uh, elected to bat against righties thanks to his better contact and power. He needs to continue, though, to produce if he wants to stay in the role. As Patrick Bailey is the preferred option at catcher here in San Francisco. Follow off to the third baseman, and we might have a triple play, and we don't. Oh, he didn't tag Jorge Soler, so an opportunity there at the triple play. Soler just barely able to dodge that. They do get the double play, getting the man out at first and second, but now up is Matt Chapman, chance to score the first run from third, hit at the second baseman, grabs, settles his feet, thrown to first, and he's safe! Jorge Soler's run will count Matt Chapman using his legs to get the first run here today. Oh my god, thank you. Cattell Marte just could not settle his feet, calling that phenomenal grab with that hit up the middle. So man on first, Sophomore player Marco Luciano up to bat. Oh, that's low. He's in a 1-1 count now, 2-1 count following that ball. Last year in his rookie season, bad 246 with 19 home runs. Dude was belting balls out of this park and out of every park the first half of the season. And he's going to get a base hit here today. Moving the runner over to second. Man on first and second. Yes, I love Luciano. He is one of the best prospects on this team. Again, he was favorite to win Rookie of the Year for pretty much three-fourths of the season. Once September hit, that's when everyone started looking at all these other prospects. Domingue is up, swinging it at the third pitch, and he pops out to Corbin Carroll in right field. It's all right, Dominguez. You'll, you'll get your hits when you can. But Giants taking a one-run one run lead thanks to Matt Chapman's amazing flashy legs. Call him the white, uh, call him the flash, man. Speeding down that line to help us score. But Jake McCarthy, 2-2 two -two count. Logan Webb, pitch is away, fouled off. Trying to get him with that low circle change. McCarthy swings at a pitch in the dirt. Try to run it out to first, but that will be four strikeout for Logan Webb. Don't even try to make a, a run for it, dude. Our catchers are too good at fielding. Ball's not going to get away from him. So back to the top of the order, Cattell Marte. Falls one off to the right, putting him in a 1-2 count. Marte 0 for 1 today. Pitch to him. Hit on to the first baseman, Wilmer Flores. Grabbed oh. easily. And that will be out number 2. Wilmer Flores looking good over there at first base. He's already had to field two pitches here. Or two, uh, two different hit balls to him. He's fielding them rather cleanly. Geraldo Perdomo up. 0 for 1 today. Circle change goes in the dirt. This will be his fifth year with Arizona. It's in a 2-1 count. Swinging at that circle change for strike two. 2-2 two -two now to Perdomo. This will be pitch number 45 for Logan Webb. 
That one's good. And that was a nice hit. That would have been a good, easy single, potentially a double for Perdomo if it would have stayed fair. So 2-2 two -two now, Webb. Right down the middle, another solid hit. This one's down the right field line. And that one goes follow again. Opportunity for a double if that stayed fair. Just too much of the, of the plate. This one will get hit. First baseman Wilmer Flores fields it. That's an out. And that will be taking himself out number three, Flores. Doing the fielding himself. And Wo Logan Webb keeping the, uh, the balls hit like pretty close in front of him. We had a little blooper yeah, hit yeah. right to time. him. And then three, hit, uh, three balls hit to Wilmer Flores. Like, that's good pitching. Lead off man Jung Ho Lee up. He swings and misses for a 1-2 count. But he's 0 for 1 today. Logan Webb pitch. I mean, not Logan Webb. Fucking Zach Gallon's pitch away. Fouled off by Lee Weekly. Swung a little early on that, but able to get just enough. And he will go down for the second time today looking. Oh, my God. Going down looking. Reason. Jung Ho Lee. Jesus, man. Tyro Oshrana, 0 for 1 with a fly out here today. He finds himself in a 1-1 one -one count. I'm going to take that circle change for a ball. He has a seven-year career, one uh, with the New York Yankees and San Francisco combined. And blooper into center field. Center fielder gets under it. Out number one. I think that's Alec Thomas playing center field. And it is. Yeah, Alec Thomas get under that. So two outs. Juan Soto up. 1-1. One, one. He's in a 1-1 one, one count. He's 0 for 1 today. I believe he struck out in his first plate appearance. Trying not to go 0 for 2. San Francisco Giants... Fans looking for him to go deep here today. Fouls off that fastball, staying 1-2. Trying to get Gallon to work, get his pitch clock, uh, pitch number up there, if nothing else. And this one will be hit right to the first baseman, Christian Walker. He signed in the offseason this past year, getting himself an extension for out number three. So still 1-0 Giants here. Carroll, Curiel Jr., and Walker up next in the top of the fourth. Leading off for Arizona, the right fielder, number seven. So Corbin Carroll Corbin. up next, 0 for 1 with a ground out. He's in a 1 1 count with Logan Webb. Pitch away, hit on to the shortstop. Luciano grab, throws on the first, and he's out. Corbin Carroll with his 99 speed, one of the fastest players in the land. Going to be thrown out by the shortstop, Luciano, who he said needs to work on his fielding. If he's able to make plays like that and throw out a man like Corbin Carroll, he's doing fine over there at shortstop. Where does Goriel up now in a 2-1 count? He singled back in the second. Actually got the first hit for the Arizona Diamondbacks back in that second. Takes that low sinker for strike number two. He was acquired by the uh, Toronto Blue Jays back in 2022. And he's gonna swing at that slider. Here we go, I believe that's strikeout number five. And it is, strikeout number five for Logan Webb. Are we about to see a big breakout campaign by Logan Webb? He tore his rotator cuff Comes into the season one year older, and now he's pissed off, striking everybody out? Are we about to see Logan Webb take that next step? Hit on, straight line drive up the middle. Christian Walker on with a base hit. Yeah, that was just hit right up the middle. If Luci like, that's probably a, that, honestly, honestly, still, if that, I think we got Luciano's fielding up there a little bit better. I think he could have grabbed that. Elias Diaz up, one for one with a single earlier. Pitch out, trying to keep the man at first honest. That's fine, yeah, 
So Elias Diaz did single back in the second. He's batting 251, or batted 251 last year. Trying to keep this a one nothing game. Stop a two out rally here is Logan Webb. Got Alec Thomas on deck. Webb throwing that inside pitch for a ball. So we pitch number 63 and 3-1 count to Elias Diaz. This one will be hit into the right field. Juan Soto under it, and that will be out number three. So keeping this a one nothing game, we go to the bottom of the fourth where we will see Jorge Soler, Wilmer Flores, and Blake Sable. Ooh, deja vu from the second, perhaps? So Jorge Soler up. He singled and scored a run back in the second. It's in a 1-1 count against Gallon. Like we said earlier, he was one of the most consistent hitters for this San Francisco Giants team last year. We are hoping that he can continue that here today. Falls off that circle change. 2-2 two -two count now. Pitch number 54 for Zach Gallen. Pitch is away, swung on. That one goes foul to the right. All right, so 2-2. Two -two. Solaire staying alive. And he swings and misses. Super early swing on that circle change. He was expecting heat. Gallon threw him the breaking ball. Wasn't even close to the strike zone. Oh, Solaire, you can't be swinging at those. Wilmer Flores now up. He led this team in home runs back in 2022. Oh, no, sorry. 2020, 2023, he led this team in home runs. He's got power on that bat. San Francisco still looking for their first home run of this season as well. High fastball, that's what he wanted. He just, he was looking a little iffy. I couldn't tell, uh, if you could tell from that swing. So full count to Wilmer Flores. Circle change, fouled off, all right. So Flores knows, he's a veteran. He's saying anything close, I need to at least get some kind of contact. So still full count. And he check swings the fastball, and the ump says he went. Strikeout number four, I believe, for Zach Allen. Now bring up Blake Sable. He's got a little bit of, he's got some power. He's got some power as well against righties. He takes the first pitch for a ball. 2-1 count. Damn, man, that knuckle curve. Everyone's going chasing on those way outside pitches. Sit back, wait for your pitch here in San Fran. 2-2 pitch. Swung on, hit to the second baseman. Fielded by Marte, and that'll be it. Easy ground out. End of four. So it's still a one nothing game. No real action happening since the second inning. Giants up one nothing. Leading off for Arizona, the center fielder, Alec Thomas. So top of the fifth, Logan Webb still in. Throws him a circle change, high and away for strike two. One, two count to the leadoff man, Alec Thomas. And he swings at that outside circle change. Six Ks here today for Logan Webb. He's looking for nine. Eugenio Suarez up now, 0 for one today. Webb now over 70 pitches. Suarez follows one off in his 2-1 count to make it 2-2. Two -two. So 
on his 2-2 count. Pitch away. Hit on. Pass the third. In between the second. Or not second. Short and third baseman. Now be a, a one-out single for Eugenio Suarez. Makes solid contact there. Getting his first hit of the season. Is the Are the Diamondbacks about to get a one-out rally going? Jake McCarthy's got speed. See what he's going to be able to do here. Follows off his first, uh, his third pitch scene. 2-1 count now to Jake McCarthy. Logan Webb getting set. Looking for that seventh punch out here today. And he gets him with the circle chain. Jake McCarthy, sit your ass down, boy. So Cabell Marte out is now up. He batted 320 last season. So for two with a ground out and a fly out with a man on first. Pitch away, fouls off behind the catcher. One two count now to Cattell Marte. Let's go, Webb. Strike this fucker out. Get your number eight. Hit on to the third baseman, Chapman, fielded. Settles it, throws over to first for out number three. So going into the bottom of the fifth, still one nothing game, leaving a man over on first. We got Chapman, Luciano, and Dominguez up here for San Francisco. Chapman, one for one with an RBI single back in the second. And he's gonna swing at that knuckle curve right down the middle. He was selected in the first round back in 2014. Gonna take that slider for ball. Most of our guys have been swinging at those pitches, so full count now to Chapman. And he will walk on that knuckle curve. First walk allowed in his game, actually. By both pitchers, the first walk happens here in the bottom of the fifth. So Marco Luciano up. He singled back in the second. We have Chapman over on first following the walk. Swings and follows that off to the right. 1-2 count now to Luciano. Pitches away. Follows this one off to the right again. To Luciano getting Gallon's pitch count up. I do believe Gallon has thrown more pitches than Logan Webb here today. It's not uncommon to see the losing pitcher or the pitcher that is losing at the time to have more pitches thrown. Takes that knuckle curve down low, and now Luciano finds himself in a full count. Good plate discipline up there. And he's going to take that four-seam fastball back-to-back -back walks by Zach Gallen. Luciano battling from a 1-2 count to a walk. That is impressive plate discipline from the sophomore. Now up is Jason Dominguez. He's got a man on first and second. He's in a 1-1 one, uh, one, one count. Swinging early on that circle change. 1-2 one, two count now to Jason Dominguez. He's been a highly anticipated prospect to see up here in the MLB. Signed out of the Dominican Republic. Going to take that knuckle curve for a ball. 2-2 two, two count. Might see Dominguez start taking a step back, waiting for that fastball. Pitch comes right at him. The knuckle curve might have gotten away. Full count now to Jason Dominguez. Are we about to see Zach Gallen walk the bases loaded? We aren't as he swings at that high fastball. That's the pitch he wanted. He just got underneath it. Out number one. Now bleed off. Uh, that will bring our leadoff man, Jung Ho Lee, to the plate. He's got a pair of strikeouts here today with a man on first and second. Going to hit this over to third baseman. They're trying to set up the double play, and they won't get him. They get the man at second, but not Jung Ho Lee at first. So players now at the corner with two outs. 
Luciano got out at second. So we got Chapman on third, Lee at first. Estrada's up. He's got a fly out and a line out today. Last year he batted 270. He's looking to make this a 2 0 game for San Francisco. This might be Gallon's last inning. Swing on it, right up the middle, and shortstop can't get there. That is going to score Matt Chapman. 2 0 San Francisco. Man on first and second, Tyro Estrada. Doesn't get the hardest hit ball up the middle, but gets enough of it to get by Gallon and just barely outside the reach of Geraldo Perdomo. Geraldo Perdomo. And yeah, boy, Estrada. Now bring up Juan Soto, two outs, man on first and second. He's 0 for 2 today, so he's looking for his first hit. He finds himself in a 1-2 count. He batted 297 last year, 39 home runs. He is due for a hit here today. And he's going to crush one. But this one's going to go foul. If it would have stayed fair, that would have been his first hit and first home run of the season. Oh, that one yanks foul. Instead, it will just drowned out to the shortstop. End of five, two, nothing. Thanks to Tyro Estrada's blooper hit or blooper line drive right up the middle. Uh, you can't say blooper and line drive, can you? Just a blooper up the middle, thanks to him. Enough contact to get outside, everyone. That's all you need. You just need some kind of contact. So two nothing game, top of the six. Gerardo Perdomo up, 0 for 2 today. Logan Webb, 83rd pitch. Just weakly hit to the right. That one goes foul. 1-2 count now to Perdomo. And Logan Webb, eighth strikeout. Perdomo made contact with the ball, but Blake Sable was able to get enough of that pitch, hold on to it in his glove, and that's why it's still a strikeout. Thank you, Perdomo. Yeah, he got enough of it, changed direction, but it was too late for him, too late of a swing. So Corbin Carroll up, 1-1 one, one count. Pitches away, fouled off behind the catcher. One two count now. Corbin Carroll, swing on, hit to the first baseman, Wilmer Flores. It's a foot race, and Flores will step on the bag. Out number two. That'll be the fourth or fifth pitch hit, or fourth or fifth ball hit to Wilmer Flores here today. <laughs> Logan Webb doing very well to keep the ball on the ground and the contact to a minimum. Hit on to the shortstop, Luciano throwing it over, out number three. Pretty quick inning here for Logan Webb and the San Francisco Giants. They are looking to take the lead by, uh, league by storm here following the signing of uh, Juan Soto. They're looking to take that next step to actually become a a positive team. Instead of being a below 500 team, they want to be an above 500 team. Jorge Soler, one for two today, facing Zach Gallon, who is over 100 pitches thrown. Swinging at that slider, which he shouldn't be, for strike number two. One, two count now to Soler. These Giant fans getting eager to see who will be the first Giant to hit a home run. Are you kidding me, Ump? Jorge Soler not happy about that, but Gallon gets his seventh strikeout here. This Ump, man, he's missing, he's blowing a lot of calls. Calling that strike three, high outside fastball. Yikes. 1-1 one, one count now to Wilmer Flores, turns to a 1-2 count following a fouled off pitch behind the catcher. Flores is one for three today with a nice single. Two, two. And take that knuckle curve for ball two. Two, two now. Hey. 
And he swings at the high fastball. Man, that wasn't even close. That was high, high fastball. Gallon gets his eighth strikeout here today. Two outs, and he might get out of the sixth. Now up against Blake Sable, pops him up. Catcher getting under it, and that will be out number three. Gallon gets out of the inning. Probably going to be the end of his day, considering he is in a he's thrown more than a hundred pitches. <sighs> but you never know; they might bring him back here in the seventh. Christian Walker up one for two with a single back in the fourth. He finds himself in a two-one count to Logan Webb. Right down the middle, fastball. You can't be doing that that here in the MLB, Webb. You can't. Keep it to the outside parts of the plate. So 2-2 two -two count now to Christian Walker. Pitch away, trying to get a four-seam fastball down low. Webb take, uh, not Webb, Walker takes it. Full count now. Logan Webb gets into his stuff. Falls off the circle change over to the right. So still full count. And he's going to crush one into right field. There's the first home run. That might have left the park. Christian Walker, 354 feet. The seventh inning starts with a bang. 2-1 now for San Francisco. Thanks to Christian Walker's power bat. Oh, I didn't think he got that good contact, but apparently he did. Curves over, and a fan's going to be able to grab it. So it did not go out of play. Bob Melvin now coming out, clapping everyone, telling everyone to chant for Logan Webb, as they should. He's pitched phenomenal, and it's been a tough opponent, too. The Diamondbacks are not an easy opponent, Webb. So that will be it for Logan Webb. Top of the seventh. It's a 2-1 game, and we will see Phil Bickford out tonight. All right, we got a Bickford sighting. Last season, posted a 2.05 ERA, one of our best ERA pitchers. 21.4% strikeout rate and a 6% walk rate. He's up against Elias Diaz, who's one for two today. Bickford's first pitch fouled off to the right. Well, I should say third pitch. Diaz in a 1-2 count. Bickford looking for his first strikeout of the season. Fans getting rather rowdy behind the plate. Fouls or hit softly over to the third baseman. Felt fielded. That's and that'll be out number one here in the seventh. So these Giants playing really good ball, man. Not a lot of balls have been getting hit into the outfield. So now up next for Arizona is Alec Thomas. 1-1 one, one count. He's 0 for 2 today. And he'll follow a pitch behind him. So 1-2. Bickford getting set. No, that missed. That's the ball. Oh, we're not going to get help there, um. We're not going to get help. He'll call strike number three on everyone for us. But not for them, hmm? All right, I see how the MLB, or who the MLB wants to win this game. So 2-2 two -two count. Pitches away, swung on, and fouled back. So Alec Thomas getting Bickford's pitch count up there. This is a good battle between the two. This will be his, uh, I think his sixth pitch. No, it wouldn't be his sixth pitch. This might be his eighth or ninth pitch seen today, or at this at bat. Full count to Thomas. Bickford, set, throws. That one goes foul to the left. All right, Thomas getting on top of you. You might want to throw uh, something high and in. Or something in. Stop throwing away. Right down the middle, foul to the left. 
double digit pitches have been seen right now for Alec Thomas. Let's go, Bigford. Strike his ass out. Hit onto the third baseman. Chapman slides, grabs it. Out number two. And a boy, Champy, the gold glover over there. Able to slide, get a hold of that ball. Quick turn, whip. Out two. It's not an easy play. It's not. So Eugenio Suarez now up for Arizona. He's one for two today. Fouls went off to the left. Bickford should be uh, getting taken out of this game following this inning. Pitch count's already a little high for me. Got a full count. Slider, way, ball three, full count now to Suarez. Jake McCarthy is on deck. Let's go, Bickford. Stop playing around. And this one's hit to the second baseman, Estrada, out number three. So Bickford getting himself, or finding himself in a lot of full counts, but he's able to keep the ball on the ground. Christian Walker, solo home run to start this seventh. 2-1 game, Giants following that home run. Ryan Thompson now coming on the mound for Arizona. Six and five record, 14 holes. Pitched 94.2 innings last year, posting a 3.14 ERA and a 1.4 whip. So Matt Chapman up. He's one for one today with a single and a run scored and an RBI. He's been one of the hot bats here for San Francisco and a big reason for them winning right now. Falls off that four-seamer for now put him in a one-two count. Thompson's pitch down low, swung on and missed. Low slider below the strike zone. Chapman goes chasing. Luciana one for one with a single back in the second. He's looking to get on base. I think he walked. Yeah, yeah. Actually, now that I remember, he walked earlier. So, Luciano, what you got, buddy? Damn, that low slider is getting everybody. Ryan Thompson with his unique submarine pitch. Might be uh, throwing everybody off guard. And Luciano goes chasing. He's down swinging. Back to back strikeouts. The the left for field. Ryan Thompson. Jason Dominguez, he's 0 for 2. He's got a fly out and a strike out here. Looking for his first hit of the season. And he's going to take that singer. 1 2 count right now. So he's trying to be a little bit more patient at play. He might be ruining his opportunity to get his first hit. And yep, he's going to go chasing at that slider right past his belt buckle. That's strikeout number three. So one, two, three inning for Ryan Thompson. No contact was even made for this man. Throwing a perfect fucking inning against the bottom of our order. Tyler Matzik coming on the mound, acquired from Atlanta at the trade deadline. 63 innings pitch, two holds, four and four record with a 3.53 ERA. Hit a 25.7% strikeout rate last year. He'll be facing Jake McCarthy before going to the top of Arizona's order. Matzik pitch, four seam fastball, strike two. Camilo Duvall and Taylor Rogers are warming up in the bullpen right now. We got uh, Duvall stretch and tossing. Rogers actually warming up. So one, two count now to Jake McCarthy. Matt sick pitch. Slider goes away, ball two. So two, two count now to McCarthy. Fastball, 
clobbered. It's going to go foul to the right. Let's go, Matzik. It swung on and missed inside fastball. Carthy tries to golf swing at it, and he just can't get anything under that ball, any contact whatsoever. He is 0 for 3, possibly even 0 for 4 today. Nah, he's 0 for 3. 0 for 3 today. Cattell Marte, another player 0 for 3 for Arizona. We'll take that four seamer for ball number two. 2-1 two, count. Rounded out back in the fifth. I don't know if it's just me, but Matzik's four seamer looks fast as fuck, dude. And it's not even hitting triple digits. It just looks fast. So 2-2. Two, two. Matzik gets set. Delivers this pitch. Four seamer up high. Marte takes it. Full count now. Geraldo Perdomo on deck. Marte trying to get on base for the first time this year. Pitch hit on, fouled to the left. Chapman would have been able to grab it if it did stay fair. Full count, pitch away, fouled off this time to the right. So early on one, late on the other. Fans starting to get behind them, seeing some towels being waved. Fans getting a little loud for the support of Matzik. Hit, going deep left center field. Jung Ho Lee under it, out number two. Originally Dominguez was chasing after it, but Lee says, I got it, I got it, I got it. Dominguez backs off, out two. So now Geraldo Perdomo up, 0 for 3 today. Swinging at that inside slider. 1-2 count now to Perdomo. Matzik looking for a second punch out here. Get him, punch him out. And swings at that 4 seam fastball outside. Strikeout number two for Matzik, 2-1 game. Going to the bottom of the eighth. San Francisco looking to extend their lead before we head into the ninth where we should have a Scooby Doovy Doo ball sighting. Joe Mantiply stepping on the mound for Arizona. Four and three record last year, 10 holds in 59 innings pitched, had two had a 2.87 ERA. So Zheng Ho Lee up to bat 0 for 3 today. He is due. Let him get a hit. That's a ball. He takes that low sinker for a 2-1 count. So 2-1. Pitch away. Fouls this circle change behind him. 2-2. Two -two. Pitch away, 12-6 curve. Foul behind the catcher there. Lee making contact, but still 2-2 two -two count. Might have wanted to let that 12-6 curve go. Inside, what did he go? Got? He didn't since the third base umpire. Full count now to Jung Ho Lee. Opportunity to walk. And he's gonna hit a ball foul to the right. Good contact. Just swung at it a little too early. The full count, Lee. Gonna follow that outside sinker to the left. So Lee staying alive, making contact. This is his ninth pitch he is seeing. And he'll take the circle change, ball four. Lee on with a leadoff walk. Tyro Shran is up now. One for three with a single and an RBI. Antifly going to be looking for that double play opportunity. 1-1 one, one count. 
Set low sinker, swung on and missed. One, two count. Does Estrada got what it takes to go two for four today? Gonna take that 12 6 curve for a ball. 2 2. Estrada getting set. Nice and ready. Lead off hit past the second baseman. And Lee's gonna go for three. Oh no, he's not. I saw him uh, around that second base. But Estrada just enough. On that ball to get past the second baseman, Cattell Marte, dribbler into the outfield. So now man on first and second. Juan Soto, he's 0 for 3. Man on first and second, chance to clobber one. He'll follow that one off to the right. It's in a 2-2 count. Soto looking for his first hit as a giant. Follows that circle change for a ball. Soto, I hope you're not feeling any pressure right now, but all eyes are on you. And this one's hit right at the first baseman. He'll throw it to second and he'll get him. Zhang Ho Lee is out. Double play line drive to Christian Walker. What a fucking glove. Jorge Soler is now up, one for three with a single and a run. Soler looking for his first home run of the season. And we're looking for the first home run here hit by a giant. Follows off that sinker to the right. One, two count now for Jorge Soler. Got a man on second. Follows off the low sinker again. Hmm. Ant applies 26th pitch here in the bottom of the eighth. He's getting a little tired. Nope, ball. Circle change too low for a ball. 2-2 two, two. Two now to Solaire. Trying to pick off Estrada. See if he's really got a pitch to Solaire. Solaire's got the power, he's got the lefty. And he's gonna crush one to the left field, but it'll go foul. Mantiply knows that Soler is his worst enemy. He is his weakness. Soler, go deep. He hits one, deep center field, but Alec Thomas is under it for out number three. So we're heading to the top of the ninth. We should have a Scooby Dooby Duval sighting. And Giants have a one run lead to protect. And we will. We have a Duval sighting. Camillo Duval. Does he have what it takes to slam the door? Last year, he had 38 saves with the team. He was one away from tying his career high. So we're looking to try to get him 40 saves this season. He falls off that sink outside sinker. One, two count. Camilo Duvall pitching against Corbin Carroll. Not an easy part of their lineup to be pitching to. Low inside slider taken for ball two. So 2-2 two, two now to, Camilo, uh, to uh, Corbin Carroll. He's a little hit and line out right to Wilmer Flores. And a boy Duval out number one. One batter up, one batter down. Lourdes Guriel Jr. now up. One for three with a single back in the second. He's got in a 2-1 count. Follows that cutter off behind him. 2-2 two, two now to Guriel. This will be the 10th pitch thrown by Duval. Pitch away, down low, swinging at that slider. That should have been the punch out pitch, but somehow Guriel was able to get enough contact 
or just a piece of it, really. Crushed one to the left. Duvall's got to be careful against Gurriel. He's looking to tie this game up with a single swing. Duvall's pitch away, down low, hit on to Wilmer Flores. And that'll be his second put out of the inning. Wilmer Flores, dude. He's getting close to double digit punch outs himself. Christian Walker up, he's got a single and a solo home run here today. He's two for three. Duval has him in a 1-1 one -one count. He'll take that low sinker for ball one. Let's go, let's get Christian Walker out, Duval. Two one count, swinging at that one. That one goes to the right, foul, 2-2. Two -two. Wilmer Flores almost got another punch out or put out. Crushes one off to the left. Walker now sizing these pitches up. He's looking to try to win this game by himself. 2-2. Two -two. Pitch right down the middle. Grabbed by Estrada. San Francisco wins. Gets their first win of the season. Duvall gets his first save of the season. Logan Webb first win of the season. And that's a good vibe. Now we didn't get to see much from Juan Soto here today, but we got to see what the rest of this team has in store for us. The middle of our lineup looks solid. It's just the ends that need a little bit of work. And it's showing though. San Francisco's got promise. Unfortunately, we weren't able to see as much action as I would hope. But I'm sure we will see some more as the season goes on. my party we're just getting started a life is a dream or a nightmare scarring hand me a drink because i think i'm going all in get me a shrink who can catch me when i'm falling cover up my scars flip the handlebars crashing in my car wake up in a bar i'll be a superstar 